This video is sponsored by iFixit, and I bought the first broken Xbox Series X controller on eBay to see if I could fix it. And yes, this is how they shipped it, and it smells disgusting. <coughs> it's like a perfume or something. It's not smoke, it's just gross. Now, I don't remember what is wrong with this controller. I bought it so long ago that I don't remember what the seller said was wrong, but it looks like it's pretty much in brand new condition. So I'm gonna hook this up to a gamepad tester and see if we can figure out what's going on. Do we have power? Oh wow, okay. There's no power at all on this thing. Okay, well, I think it's time for everyone's favorite part. Let's take it apart. I'll be using my favorite tool set, the iFixit ProTech Toolkit. I'm gonna be grabbing a T9 out of here, and then I can remove the screws out of the controller. So the first thing I see that I'm interested in is this test point three right here. This looks to be where the battery contacts connect. This little tab right here is from the battery contacts. So that would be these battery contacts right here. So they contact right here. It looks like, yeah, this has like some gunk on it. It looks like some flux or maybe they spilled something in the controller or something. There's definitely something on there. So I'm gonna clean this up and then clean up the other contact and then we'll try it again and just see if it was that easy of a fix. I'm also gonna take this contact and bend it down just a little bit. That will make it so it makes a tighter contact with that pad on the board. Now with those two things done, let's try it again. Still nothing. Let's double check and make sure we have the correct voltage here. So we're gonna go from the positive on this battery to the negative on this one. 2.9 volts. These are 1.5 volt batteries. So that's about right. It should actually be a little bit higher than that with fully charged batteries, but that should be enough to at least get this thing to turn on and back apart. I always like to just try and have an inspection of the board. And just upon first inspection, I see no problems with this board. So I'm going to remove the screws out of this board, remove this one, then take a look at this bottom board. And I'll be using a Torx T6 for those screws. And once again, no obvious problems on this board. And I also don't see any obvious problems with this board. So next, I'm gonna desolder this board out of the controller so we can sandwich these two boards together and start doing some testing. There we go, now we have full access to both of these boards. Given the fact that there are no diagrams, no schematics, no anything on these, and also given the fact that a lot of times controllers get abused, I'm gonna go ahead and reflow this main chip on the board. Basically that just means I'm gonna heat it up until the solder balls underneath melt. And I'm doing this because I suspect there may be faulty solder joints underneath this chip. And BGA chips are notorious for that sort of a problem. So I'm gonna try that first. And then if we don't get any results there, then we'll get into more testing of the boards. Okay, and now this chip has been reflowed. This chip is similar to the chip on the PS5 DualSense controller. If you watched my video about fixing eight of those, you saw me reflow the chip on that controller and that did end up fixing the problem. I'm not sure whether I think it'll fix this one, but it's definitely worth a try. It's quick and fairly easy. So that's why I sometimes do that before I get into other diagnosis. So now let's put it back together enough to test and see if that fixed it. All right, that should be together enough to tell me whether that worked. Let's try it out. Whoa, we got a light. 
Okay, that's great news. Okay, and here we actually even have it on the screen. And the buttons do seem to work. Okay, great news so far. That might have fixed this one. I do need to put it back together all the way and just test all the buttons to be sure, but that's a great start. So I'm gonna get it put back together and then we'll give it a full test. Okay, now we have it all back together. Let's see what happens. What? Now it doesn't turn on at all. So what would cause it to work with it out of the controller casing, but not work when it's installed? That's what we need to figure out next. One of the things that changed is that I have those four wires soldered on. Maybe you need to desolder those and then see if that changes whether it'll turn on or not. And now with the shell off, I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, next I'm gonna try removing these two wires and we'll plug it in again. Oh, that's it. We have power now. Okay, I've never seen this problem before. So next I'm gonna hook up one of these wires and see if the problem still happens. Then I'll hook up the other one after that and we'll see which one is causing the problem. Okay, with that one hooked up. Okay, no power. Now this one's disconnected and the one with the blue mark is connected. And we have power. So this seems to be somehow a problem. I have no idea why that would cause a problem where it wouldn't power on, but that is the problem we have. So I thought that reflowing this chip is what fixed it but I think just having this antenna disconnected is what's making it actually turn on now. So now I have the blue wire that goes to this antenna over here hooked up to where this wire was hooked up just to rule out anything on this side of the circuit. So now let's see if it turns on like that. Okay, it does not turn on. So this tells me that if anything, there's a problem in the little circuit that goes to the chip, or unfortunately, it could also be something on the chip itself. So this is a known good working controller, and this is the controller that's having problems. I wanted to check these little components in this line with the antenna that's faulty on the bad controller and just make sure the problem wasn't any of these little components. So I compared the readings from this good controller to the faulty one and found the exact same readings. These little components right here are what I'm talking about and they're right on this line that goes to the antenna. Unfortunately, since all of these little components are testing fine, the only other thing that I know of that could be wrong would be something with this chip. Now I have already reflowed this chip, so usually if you reflow it once, reflowing it again isn't really gonna do anything. So I'm not gonna reflow it again. At this point, I'm not really sure what else there is left that I can do. Now theoretically, if I took the chip from the known good controller and put it onto this controller, that could fix it, but there's just no way to know for sure. So at this point, I'm going to leave this antenna unplugged and then plug this controller into an Xbox and just see if it connects wirelessly still and if it still works wirelessly from a distance. Okay, still turns on. So now I'm gonna plug it into a console and see what happens. Okay, it is connected now. Okay, so far the controller's working fine with it being unplugged. I'm gonna get a little bit further away from the console and see if it'll still work then. Oh, and it does not. Oh, there we go. Okay, even just this far away, already having problems. Unfortunately, having the antenna disconnected inside the controller makes it so you can't use it from very far away. Now I can still use this controller as a wired controller and that'll work just fine. So that may be what I do, but I'm gonna keep it around because maybe at some point in the future, I'll be able to figure out what might be able to fix this. Replacing that chip could fix it if I took it from a known good board, 
but I don't have a good donor board for it. And that will be an extremely difficult job because I will have to reball it. And that's not something I'm gonna do in this video, maybe in the future, or maybe I'll send it to somebody else who might be able to fix it. If you like this video, you might like the video where I fixed eight broken DualSense controllers for the PS5. I'll put that link up on the screen now so you can click on that and come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to iFixit for sponsoring this video and I hope you have a good one.